Hi, I'm Carl Host from the Lincoln Electric Welding School in Cleveland, Ohio. And today we're going to talk about another material that we encounter sometimes in welding, and that's magnesium alloys. Magnesium alloys have a lot of desirable properties. It's very lightweight. It weighs about two-thirds the weight of aluminum. It's easy to machine. It's easy to cast. And uh, it also absorbs vibration, which is, uh, makes it desirable for tools like chainsaws and weed whackers. Sometimes as a welder, we run into magnesium alloys and it looks a lot like aluminum. It has a melting temperature very similar to aluminum. Uh, it has an oxide on the surface. It melts at a higher temperature than the base metal. And we weld it very similar uh, on, on AC. But one thing we don't want to do is mix up the two materials and weld them with the wrong filler metal. I have two castings here. They're actually two different parts, but they uh, look like they're made out of a similar material. In fact, it'd be pretty easy to assume that they're both aluminum. Um, but it would be a big mistake if I didn't do a little test here. So what I'm going to do is test these two with a special solvent that I have here, and that's white vinegar. Same thing that's in your kitchen. And I'm going to pour some of the white vinegar on this first casting, and we'll see what happens. Well, just kind of lays there like white vinegar. So now we'll check this other casting and see what happens with it. You can see that foaming action there. Kind of looks like peroxide when you put it on an infection, doesn't it? This is a magnesium casting. This is an aluminum casting. Strangely, you have aluminum alloys that have magnesium in them. You know, they can have up to 6% magnesium, but it doesn't react on those. But the magnesium alloys, even though they have aluminum in them, it does react. I'm going to show you what happens when welders get aluminum and magnesium mixed up. It's pretty easy to have that happen. Somebody brings you a casting, and I, I think more than one welder has done this. I hate to admit I've done it myself, but uh, someone brings you a casting, you think it's aluminum, you grind it all out, you weld it up, and you hand it to the guy, and he says thank you, and walks away and gets out to his car and comes back and says, this piece just came apart in my hand. Um, that's because you use aluminum filler metal on magnesium. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some aluminum plate and I'm going to weld it with magnesium filler metal just to show you what happens when you join the two. Um, now they really don't join, but uh, sometimes it'll fool you. It looks like it is. Before I get started here, we got to go over a couple safety points here about magnesium. When you grind magnesium or machine ma magnesium, the shavings are flammable. So if a pile of shavings or grinding dust is left laying on your floor, it can actually start a fire. And you don't put that fire out with water. You have to use a Class D fire extinguisher to, to extinguish that fire or smother it with dry sand. Uh, you could have a, a chemical reaction if you put water on top of magnesium and it could, be, could get pretty ugly. The fire will actually burn hotter. Today I'm going to be using this V205T TIG welder. I have it set on AC polarity just like I'm going to weld aluminum. I have the uh, frequency set at 120 hertz and I'm running about 80 percent negative balance. Should be good for what I'm doing. I got a PTA number 9 torch, 125 amp torch, and a gas lens collet body. Uh, with inverters, they work best with an alloy tungsten, even on aluminum and magnesium. I'll be using some magnesium filler metal. It's an AZ92A uh, magnesium filler metal from Harris Products Group. And um, it is, uh, has about 9% aluminum and about 2% zinc alloyed into the magnesium. As always, when I'm welding, I like to make sure I have my appropriate safety gear on. I have my gloves on, long sleeve fire retardant shirt, safety glasses, and a welding hood adjusted to the appropriate lens shade for TIG welding. I also make sure I have ventilation available. Uh, magnesium alloys are alloyed with zinc sometimes or other, other materials that uh, can produce some fumes. So I want to make sure we exhaust that out. Don't want to breathe that in. As with a lot of other things in life, we don't always learn everything by doing everything right the first time, so sometimes we have to make mistakes. So what I'm going to do here is do something wrong. I'm going to weld this aluminum alloy. That's a, a 30 aught 3 alloy aluminum, and I'm going to weld it with magnesium filler. It'll look like it welds all right, but we'll see what happens afterwards. Uh, by the way, the same thing would happen if I tried to weld a magnesium alloy with aluminum filler. So let's take a look and see what happens here. Not 
a great looking well, but it is stuck together and that looks, looks all right to me. Usually when the person walks out the door, what happens is this, it comes right apart. So now you see what happened when you select the wrong filler metal. You can't weld aluminum with magnesium filler metal, and likewise I can't weld this magnesium casting with aluminum filler metal, and that happens more often than a lot of people would like to admit. So we've tested this and we know this is magnesium. In fact, I know it's an AZ92 magnesium casting, so it has about 9% aluminum and 2% uh, zinc added to it. So I'm going to weld it with an AZ92 filler metal. I'm matching the uh, base metal with a filler metal using AC polarity like we said earlier. And always before I weld I prepare everything by grinding it clean and uh, make sure before you grind actually to, to wipe it down with an acetone, clean it, degrease it. Uh, also clean your wire. If your wire has been laying around for a while, magnesium wire tends to, to grow a thicker oxide on the surface and uh, that should be cleaned off with a scotch bright pad, something like that if it's, if it's been laying around for a while. Brand new wire should be all right. Usually after welding, there's some post-weld heat treatments recommended, some stress relief, uh, 500 degrees for half an hour, 600 degrees, somewhere in there. And you have to look that up in the book, depending on the alloy of magnesium you're welding on, there's different post-weld stress relief uh, heat treatments that are performed. So check that out before you weld something critical. If you'd like more information on welding and welding education, go to lincolnelectric.com.